This is the Metropolitan Zoo on page 496. I'm only going up to steps A through J. You're doing the pay for the Metropolitan Zoo. There are notes in the lower section. We're going to be doing the pay. As you can see, Abram worked 48 hours, as you know. Overtime is after 40, it's time and a half. You're going to determine with an if statement what the regular pay is at 40 hours, the overtime, 8 hours at time and a half. So to do that, the beginning one, I'm in E5. You are going to do an if statement. The regular pay for Abram will be 40. If you go to row 8, it will be 30. So we're going to do the if statement. Formulas, logical, if. And I want to say, if the hours worked is greater than 40. And don't type in 40. Use the cell reference here, F for it. It's saying true. And I made it in a constant. If it's true, it's going to be the 40 hours here. Constant times his hourly rate. If it's false, like one of these people here, where they, it's 38, you're going to actually use the actual hours worked times the hourly rate. We say, okay, it's 398 dollars. It says it's in the book. Now we're going to do the overtime. What we're going to do here is another if statement. We're going to say if this is greater than the 40 if it's true, we need to get extract 8 hours here. So it's going to be this minus the 40. So that's giving me 8 hours times the hourly rate times the overtime ratio, or I should say constant. So it's going to say minus 0.549. That is not right. As you can see, I have an error here. We're going to get rid of everything. If it's true, it's going to be, I'm going to use parentheses now. 48 hours minus the 40 threshold constant that will give us 8 hours times hourly rate times OT threshold constant 119.40 if it's false like if it's Higginbotham he's going to get nothing so you type in a zero we say OK. We could pull it down. So we got the numbers there. The gross pay, all you do is add these two up. Taxable pay. What it is, if you have dependents, you're going to be getting a $50 off for each person. So they're going to get $100 subtracted from the gross pay. So it's equal this minus two dependents times constant $50. So you're subtracting $100. The federal withholding tax is based on what your taxable pay is. You have a V look up here. I'm doing a few extra things in here. It has you highlighting the range and working with 
constants. I could highlight this stuff right here now. And I'm going to call it tax rate. Don't put spaces in a range name. So to do this, it's tax rate. So we're going to do a VLOOKUP. And the lookup value is based on the taxable pay. T uh, ta table array is called tax rate. It shows it right over there, and it already exists. And we want to know the index number. There's two columns, column 1, column 2. The second column has the tax rate, say, 2. And we say, OK. It's going to say a quarter, 25%. We now have to do a calculation. We want 25% of the taxable rate. So you edit the formula. You will click after the parenthesis times the taxable pay, H5, 104.35. FICA is based on the gross pay, which is right there. So it's equal gross pay times constant 39 there. We'll format this later. Equal gross pay minus the federal tax and the FICA. We've got that and what we're going to do is make it accounting. I can highlight this. I could just go and highlight even blank. Home accounting. So I go here, pull it down. It's done. Next thing we want to do, um, they want accounting format here. I did this. What they want here, just highlight this, make it a comma. You want a double underline. We highlight these monetary values here. We click in the drop down arrow next to the U, double underline. Click down here, you got two underlines. And what you want to do at this point is to put in totals. Uh, you would not want to total this, this, you might want to. But if you do, you could just highlight all these cells at once. Click on the sigma key, it puts the numbers in here. And what I would do is I would go into accounting. And then I don't want $464. I could comma it. And these numbers here are right aligned. And then I would just center this. I don't advocate centering things in here. This was an indent. And you're just doing that. And what I would just do here, I'm not going to lose sleep over this. I highlight everything, make it right align, do the indent. And then you're getting those decimal points there. I widen the column. It still doesn't look right. You can fool around with that later. Next thing, we want to do statistics on the number of hours gross pay. I want to do a little bit more range names with you. This is not part of the project. need to know this. It's good to know. So what I'm going to do here, if I want to know the hours worked, I highlight this here. Type in hours. Next thing, I go into, I want to know what the gross pay is. 
I spelled it wrong. What do I do? To do that, you have to edit this. You go on to Formulas, Name Manager, it says Gorse. You can click on Edit, and then I just type in Gross, and say OK. You could change the range there, and if you need to remove one, you just click on the Delete. I close this out. The last one I want to do is the net pay. That's done. And when you're doing this, I want to show you a few easy ways here. I'm just going to do the first one here, the normal way we do things home. I click over here, the drop down arrow, average for the number of hours. Again, highlight this. And I say, it's showing the range hours here. What you can do, I could do, literally type equal max hours close, equal min hours close, gross equal average. can also watch this drag this down watch this go into here and then I could just go over here max I double clicked I go into here just double click on this type in min I'm doing the net pay equal this works great if you know how to use a keyboard left parenthesis and I type in net pay I can copy it down sometimes it's just quicker it depends on what floats your boat and I go over here max quicker to type the word than it is to type in a range name double click min and then I want everything to be, I don't want all these decimal points here. I could just go over here, reduce them. Or I could have clicked on the comma, reduced them. Uh, and we have everything done. We want these things indented from the right. We click on that little thing here, decrease indent, increase indent. Sometimes it doesn't work properly. I'm going to be honest about that. It depends on the computer. Um, but if I go right, and then if I go over here, see, it's not doing it. And when I widen this, I'm just showing you this. I'm showing you some of the funky stuff. They look fine, but you're getting all these pound signs. I'm going to undo. And then I would just, so it's important that you know the point. This stuff here, you don't need to know for a quiz or a test. Make sure you're using range names.